of rocket engine tests held yesterday. Joining me now, Bruce Klingner, Senior Research Fellow for Northeast Asia at the Heritage Foundation. He is the former CIA Deputy Division Chief for Korea. Bruce, good to see you. North Korea is calling yesterday's rocket engine test a revolutionary breakthrough. How significant is this? Uh, should we be worried about this? Uh, we should always be worried about any improvement in North Korea's missile or nuclear capabilities. Uh, we're not quite sure really how significant the development is, though. Uh, outside missile experts uh, are waiting for higher res resolution photographs that North Korea often reveals uh, in order to determine more about this, this engine. Uh, preliminarily, it looks like it's a liquid fuel engine, and they talked about it being for their civilian sat uh, satellite launch vehicle, which, of course, has the same technology as ICBM. But uh, this is probably not the road mobile ICBM uh, that they said they are in the late stages of development and will test anywhere, anytime. What is the end goal here? North Korea is famously a secret. That is probably the, the biggest understatement you could make about North Korea. What's the end goal uh, with this nuclear program? Well, for decades, really, since the 1960s, North Korea has been uh, had a steady quest to have the ability to hit the United States and its allies with nuclear weapons uh, via missiles. That's been a, a you know a, a long-growing program, but it seems in the last several years they've made some leaps and bounds in success. Not only with the ICBM, uh, but with other missiles such as a submarine-launch ballistic missile uh, and other missiles that can range the U.S. bases in Guam as well as our allies, uh, South Korea and Japan. A lot of people have interpreted these latest actions, provocations by North Korea as a direct message to the United States. Why, in your estimation, is North Korea so focused uh, on the United States of America? Well, they see us as their main opponent. Uh, they've you know, repeatedly declared they'll never abandon their nuclear weapons, what they call their treasured sword of deterrence. Uh, so you know, when people advocate a nuclear freeze negotiation, we've already had eight international agreements with North Korea that all failed, that they, they violated. Uh, so you know, it, it's, we shouldn't be in a rush to go back to negotiations until North Korea is willing to say they, they may entertain the idea of denuclearization, which uh, they've said right now is off the table. The Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, of course, has been on this uh, much publicized, a little covered by the press tour because of uh, restrictions of the press there. Uh, and he's obviously called for a different approach to dealing with the threat of North Korea. Let's, you and I, take a look at that real quick. We have 20 years of failed approach. And that is, includes a period in which the United States provided $1.35 billion in assistance to North Korea as an encouragement to take a different pathway. In the face of this ever-escalating threat, it is clear that a different approach is required. Is that fair to say? Uh, has diplomacy failed uh, entirely with North Korea? Well, the one area where I disagree with the secretary is it's actually been 25 years of, of failed attempts at diplomacy. Hmm. Uh, South and North Korea signed an agreement in 1991 uh, where North Korea committed to never uh, uh, seeking uranium enrichment or pl plutonium reprocessing capabilities for, for two different nuclear weapons program, and they, they went ahead and tried both programs, plutonium and uranium. So we think they may have 16 to 20 nuclear weapons right now with, with more on the way. So we have tried, uh, and right now it's, it's really hard to advocate for negotiations when North Korea, as I said, you know, has no intention of doing it. Uh, they they re literally are not picking up the phone. They closed the New York channel, which is the, the sort of the last way to communicate with them. And in the joint security area, which straddles the demilitarized zone, they literally don't pick up the phone. Uh, so U.S. and South Korean military officers are reduced to standing on the borderline saying, you know, please pick up your phone. We'd like to have a meeting with you. Please arrive. So. Uh, it's a one-way conversation right now. Bruce, you have such a unique perspective on this. You worked for the CIA in South Korea. Um, it, if you have a sense uh, of North Korea's mentality, do you think that, that Kim Jong-un would actually use a nuclear weapon on the United States if he, uh, if he could? Well, on, on the one hand, he's not crazy, uh, as many in the you know, media have depicted him as. He's, he's sane and rational, though, obviously, with a unique view on the world. Uh, but when he did come into power, uh, he directed his military to come up with a new war plan to be able to occupy the entire Korean Peninsula within seven days, uh, and that would require them to go nuclear early on. So they have that plan on the books. Uh, they would say it's to preempt a U.S. attack on them. We would see it as uh, to try to deter us from responding 
responding to some kind of attack that North Korea did either to us or to our ally. And just quickly, how close are we, in your estimation, from North Korea actually having the capability to have a nuclear weapon? And then outside of a military response by the United States, is cyber warfare a legitimate way to stop that from happening? We probably only have about 30 seconds. Well, as with everything with North Korea, it's hard to know exactly where they, they are on the development path. You, four U.S. four-star generals said they think North Korea already has, or we have to assume they have, for planning purposes, a nuclear capability against the U.S. Most, most outside experts say they don't think they're there yet, perhaps uh, within a few years, but probably within uh, President Trump's first term, they will have the unambiguous ability to hit the United States with a nuclear warhead. All right, Bruce Klinger, Senior Heritage Foundation Research Fellow. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Coming up right here, we will get answers, or will we, should I say, uh, tomorrow from the FBI director about Russia's involvement in...